What's up everyone, my name is Lethal and I'm back with another video. Today we're gonna talk about how to get zero ping. The title is to grab your attention. We're gonna show you how to get lower ping in both creative and your pub games. It's not just something that only works in creative. Uh, you can actually get lower ping in pub matches. So right now, I mean, I have pretty low ping and low input delay as well. If you haven't seen my low input delay video, uh, go check it out. I will put a card on screen and it will be linked down in the description. Yeah, low ping, low input delay. Right now, my ping in creative is 21. It's already super low, but this is what my ping looks like before the settings that I'm about to show you. And um, now let's turn on the magic. It was already pretty smooth before i even did the thing that i did but this is what my ping is after i was on like 20 ping oh i'm stuck doing a bot walk i think i hit the slow-mo thing normal speed there we go this is what my ping is after and the input delay is like it's so super low like zero ping in creative is ridiculous it's something i really thought i'd never be able to get but one of those things um is having decent internet and the other is just being close enough to the server. I play on NA Central. I just so happen to live close enough to Texas. I'm about a four hour drive from Dallas. You know, after just a, f a few tweaks and a little Google search, I now actually have zero ping and creative. And that's huge. I mean, I can build and edit smoothly. I'm not even the best builder out there, but now when I build something, it actually builds what I want it to build. If you don't think that zero ping actually matters in games, you're, you're wrong, you're wrong. Now that we've messed around in creative a little bit before and after, I'm gonna go to a public match. This is gonna be a regular solo build mode and I'm gonna try to hurry up through this so that we can get this video edited and posted and all that good stuff. I have my settings off, the mystery ping settings that you already know about. So right now I, I've got the program disabled. I disabled it. And my ping is 36, 37, like 40 ping basically. I can already feel like a slight amount of delay. You would think that you're not able to feel this, but you can. And uh, now we're, we're gonna get into a game. The ping didn't shoot up immediately. Like it's still around 30, which isn't bad. So we're almost at 40, we're at 35 ping. Before the TCP optimizer, my starting ping in games would be like 40 or 50. So 30 is still not bad. But let's just go on a bush real quick. Right now, 40 ping. After I enable the exit lag, then you can immediately see my ping start to drop. It's at 20. Like from 40 ping down to 20, that's a re reduction of about, you know, 18, 19 ping. Cause we're at 20, 22, 19, and it just keeps going lower and lower. We're at 17 ping. So is this in and of itself gonna make you win games? No. Absolutely not. By the way, it's a great time to let you know that I do stream on Kick, YouTube, and Twitch, as well as TikTok. Obviously, I don't stream on them at the same time, but if you go and look at any of my streams, you can see that I have like zero ping or close to zero ping. Yeah, you're dead, kid. The closer I am to end game, the lower my ping gets. I get as low as you know three to five ping because of some tweaks that pretty much anyone can do to lower your ping. You may not get zero ping, but you can definitely lower it. Wow, bot lobbies today. We're not gonna finish out this game. So I'm just gonna back out right now so we can finish recording the rest of the video. I'm gonna show you how I get zero ping and how you can possibly get zero ping or just lower your ping altogether. So what we're looking at is exit lag. Now there are a lot of services out there on the internet like this. Like for instance, I've used no ping, but no ping for me, maybe I didn't set it up right or maybe it just didn't work. But when I used it, previously years ago i wasn't getting zero ping i lived in the same city uh, had the same internet service provider pretty close to the same location and i wasn't getting zero ping until i started using exit lag now it's not free i'll just blur out the stuff that i'm not supposed to show you but it's basically a subscription you can either pay like $8.99 or $9.99 a month, or you can get it cheaper if you pay six months at a time or pay a year at a time. There are a lot of settings in here that I'm gonna show you how to use. And basically just to go through my settings, you can either screenshot this or, you know, I'll talk you through it. The first thing, I don't start it automatically with Windows. I don't have anything start up automatically. That's just my preference because I want my computer to start as fast as possible. 
Enable exit lag on start just means that when you open the program, it's already going to start working rather than opening it and toggling this little switch on. Uh, minimize exit lag to system tray on close. Very useful. Instead of putting it down here on your taskbar and minimizing it like that, you can just hit the X and it'll go in your system tray. Next up, show notification when an application is being proxified. I mean, I guess that's a personal preference. Enable high DPI scaling. I always do that for most of my applications. Hit redirection method. It's on automatic. Um, when I learned how to use this, it said to put it on legacy and dis but you can actually have it on imac i've had no problems accuracy and route optimization i have that on high protocol to analyze routes udp tcp psh for whatever reason that's what works for me if you're an advanced user, you can try out some other settings. Real-time optimization. It says calculate in real time, which are the best routes for your connection to ensure that the best route is being used. I have that on smart optimization, something similar. Calculate only the routes that can be efficient for your connection. Not sure what all that means, but I have both of them toggled on. Enable IPv6. So I read up somewhere, these uh, game servers and stuff only use IPv4 anyway. You don't need that. Enable high QoS priority. So uh, this is a setting I have disabled. When I've had it enabled, it's led to me having a slightly higher ping than when it's disabled. Don't really understand why, but that's just how it is. This is not an ad. I'm not really sponsored. They do have kind of an affiliate link for me to use so I can get commission if I get you to use exit lag, but I'm not getting paid to make this video or anything like that. It's just something that I used. I did my research and I love it and it's worth me paying almost 10 bucks a month for it. And in the future, I'll probably pay a year at a time or six months at a time just to get it cheaper save some money all right so the last of the settings allow dual routes i have that checked high udp ports have that on hotkeys i don't need any hotkeys you could have a hotkey set to turn this program on and off and that would have been useful you know and then there's a shortcut to interrupt the connection with the application which is the hotkey that you can set to turn this thing on and off and then there's this big red button at the bottom says restore original configuration never have used it probably never will i love my settings and hopefully you do if you try this what i will say there's a disclaimer to this whole process you're not going to be able to use this if you don't use ethernet it's not an application that's going to work if you're connected via wi-fi it's also not a application that's going to work if you're on console you can't use exit lag on console you're just going to have to have you know a better internet service provider you're still going to need to plug your console you know to your router with an ethernet cable using ethernet over wi-fi is still something that benefits both pc and console but this is for pc only and it's only if you have ethernet connection to your router next up i'm going to go ahead and minimize this uh the next program that i have for you um i'm going to run you through the settings real quickly and then that'll be it for this video just trying to make it as short and as sweet as possible but uh it is called tcp optimizer i'm gonna run it as admin um in order to download the tcp optimizer i'm gonna leave a link it's pretty straightforward to download but once you download it uh let me just show you it's in my downloads folder tcp optimizer exe you know you download it or unzip it or whatever from the website that you get it from i'm gonna leave a couple of websites so that you won't have any problem getting it as far as settings go, first thing you're going to do is go to the general tab, top left. You're going to click on custom, and this is going to allow you to change all these settings within here. Connection speed, you're going to slide this all the way to the right. Network adapter selection, you know, whatever your network adapter is, you can look it up, but there's a good chance that it's going to be already selected. Make sure that this box checked the box checked is modify all network adapters. Um, the MTU is going to be 1500 next. TCP window auto tuning, normal. Window scaling heuristics, disabled. Congestion control provider, CTCP. Receive side scaling, RSS, enabled. R segment coalescing, enabled. Time to live or TTL, 64. ECN capability, disabled and everything else on this list check some offloading tcp chimney offload large send offload and tcp 1323 timestamps all disabled you're going to hit apply changes nothing changed for me but what it's going to do is cycle through here some registry changes may require a reboot to take effect would you like to reboot now hit no because we're going to change another tab go to advanced settings in the advanced settings you're going to uh change the max connections per one underscore zero server to 10 max connections per server also 10 and low Local priority, host priority, DNS priority, and net BT priority, four, five, six, and seven. To speed this up, you could just pause the video and fill everything in as you see it here, but you're still gonna go through it. Max send retransmissions to non-SAC RTT resiliency disabled, initial RTO 2000, minimum RTO or minimal or min RTO 300. 
QoS non best effort limit zero, QoS do not use NLA optimal one, network throttling index disabled FFFFFFF or however many Fs there are, system responsiveness optimal 10, TCP ACK frequency disabled one, TCP no delay enabled one, TCP Dell ACK ticks or whatever that means disabled zero, large system cache default zero, size default one. Dynamic port allocation, max user port 65534. Again, that is 65534. I sound like an infomercial. TCP timed wait delay 30. You hit apply changes. It's gonna take you to hit this little thing, this little window right here. You hit okay, these are registry fixes. Once again, it's gonna pop up this prompt window. Let me just quickly show you where to download exit lag. So I use Google Chrome, just gonna open up my browser and type in exit lag download. Now's a perfect time to let you know that you can actually get a free three day trial, 72 hours with exit lag. You click on the main exit lag site, www.exitlag.com. And all you have to do is click on the download tab. Okay, you can download exit lag for Windows 7 and higher. I really doubt that if you're playing Fortnite or any other modern game that you have anything, you know, older than Windows 10. So you're going to download exit lag. I'm not going to do that right now because I've already done it. But basically, in my downloads folder, you can see set up exit lag.exe. That's the application that sets it up for you. I'm sure if you have PC and you do optimizations a lot, or if you don't, I'm gonna let you know, you probably should run this program as administrator each and every time it runs, just so that there's no problems with the settings it's trying to apply to your computer, okay? Lastly, I'm gonna show you how to find the game. Um, I'm gonna type Fortnite here and it shows up when you type the game. When you go to optimize it, you can do a few things actually. You can click on advanced routes. Um, you can put a zero in the first box and a two in the second box is there by default, but you can actually do up to four UDP routes. If you have problems with it just being two, four may work better for you, it may or may not. Um, the next thing, you can click update and it'll update in real time the ping to these server connections. You can click optimize and this is just going to reanalyze your routes and it's analyzing my routes for North America. It doesn't really take that long, just a few seconds. But whenever I start up exit lag, it does start analyzing the routes for every region in the world for some reason. And I don't know why and I can't fix that. I basically, this is showing the US Dallas servers estimated ping from me to the servers. 11 or 12 ping, 12 is a little higher. So it's obviously using this Dallas 67 server. And it says IPv4 and IPv6, but as you can see, both of these are IPv4 servers, which like I told you before, game servers just use IPv4 and that's what I learned. So the whole option for IPv6, which is down here, like you're, you're not gonna need it. When you do run out of your three day trial, it's gonna charge you. I have 20 days left and I renew my every month. Um, go ahead and close this. I hope that was helpful. Let me know down in the comments section uh, before and after. If you try this out and it helps you, let me know. If you haven't tried this and you don't want to, um, the TCP optimizer is free if you don't want to pay for exit lag, but you're not going to get as nearly a drastic as result from just using this free option. I use both. So um, that's going to be it for this video. I hope you guys have a good one. Uh, if you need any help, feel free to message me on any of my socials. Hope you have a great day and we'll see you next time.